So, now you have the knowledge of how this game is played, and you know what tech can be done. But you don't really know how to apply any of the tech. Or you want to become really good but you don't really know where to start, and want to learn how to practice in training mode. Well, then this video will be perfect for you, as I'll be going through a successful training method along with a ton of exercises that you should be doing. The exercises are intended to make you build muscle memory, so that once you are in battle, you aren't trying to pull something off, but instead your fingers do the job for you without you even trying. This will of course allow you to focus much more on the opponent rather than having a focus on what you should try to execute, and will of course also make you miss input less in general, if even at all. If you've ever learned how to play an instrument, you'll find this process fairly relatable. So you should basically be treating the controller as an instrument. Dedicate real time to it, and be patient with it. The secret to building muscle memory is to understand how to practice correctly. Let's take this random exercise as an example. If you want to practice doing raw buffered back airs, you should start off by focusing really hard on understanding the input. Put all of your brain power into optimizing the input and getting comfortable with it. Anything from 15 to 30 minutes. Once you have the input down and you start actually getting good at it, it's even more important now that you give it another 15 to 30 minutes of practice. However, this time, don't focus. Let your brain drift off and think about other things. Watch an anime at the same time, talk to someone at the same time, or just look out the window while you sometimes glance at the screen to make sure you aren't completely off. It's very important that you let your fingers work by themselves and get used to how it feels to press the input. This is how you effectively build muscle memory. This method of practice is of course recommended for most of the exercises that I'll be showing, but not for all. Another recommendation is that you have this video on at the same time as you are in training mode. Then you watch how I do one of the exercises, and then you try mimicking it exactly the way I'm doing it. You can even do this whole video as a warm-up before a tournament. Now, let's start with the very first thing you should be mastering, as it's the most important of them all. This first one is pretty simple. Start off by short hopping, then start adding the fast fall, and then do it as fast as the game allows you to do it with the character, so you understand the speed limits of this character and start syncing with how your specific character feels. The most important thing is to try to never accidentally full hopping. If you haven't mastered this one first, literally none of the upcoming exercises will be easy, nor consistent. Okay, so this next exercise is all about practicing your backflip, since actually getting the backflip will result in that you can jump back immediately, instead of jumping forward, then pressing yourself back. To pull this off, you simply have to run forward, press jump, and then quickly tap yourself back. This can of course be done from a standing position as well. The next exercise is all about simply short hopping all the way to the left and right. Then start adding the fast fall. Pretty simple. The next exercise is fairly similar but a bit harder. You start off by short hopping, then tapping and quickly releasing the control stick to the left and right so that you only move a minimal amount. This is called micro spacing and is crucial to master. Once you understand how to do it, Add the fast fall by simply tapping left or right and immediately down. Here's a pretty simple demonstration of why you want to master this. Let's say the opponent is cornered and you are close to them. If you jump and throw out an aerial that is overspaced, it'll be less effective as you won't be able to immediately pressure or punish the opponent for whatever they do. Or you'll just simply miss the aerial and get punished for it. However, if you microspace instead, you'll be at the perfect distance where they can't grab, and if they try punishing you, you'll be able to immediately punish them instead. Or you'll be able to add additional shield pressure with a max range tilt for example. Another example is that instead of jumping in from far away and going all the way in with the attack so that you get punished, instead now you know that you can jump forward and tap yourself back to stop your momentum, then swing to land with a well-spaced aerial. Now, on to the next exercise. Short hop in place and press attack, so that you do a short hop buffered aerial and then add the fast fall. Then also start doing a short hop into a landed aerial by simply delaying the attack. Once you know how to do this, start adding fast falling. When you start to get a hang of this, start short hopping and buffering with all of your aerials and fast fall. Then start doing short hop into landed aerials while fast falling. 
These landed aerials need to be timed with the C stick so you don't influence your movement at all. These next exercises allow you to really become consistent at spacing. So stand at the edge of the stage, then jump backwards all the way and use the C stick for landing forward airs. Once you get to the other side, jump forward all the way and use C stick for landing back airs or any other aerial. Then start adding fast falling. You should also do a round of this where you practice doing falling neutral airs that are fast fallen. For this, you basically do a jump towards a direction, release the stick as you press A, and then press the stick back in the direction you were originally jumping. Then you do the same thing, but you move a minimal amount instead. In the next exercise, you're going to be practicing full hop aerials, but have the aerial come out as quickly as possible. Since it isn't possible to ever buffer a full hop aerial, you'll need to practice timing it very well. If you try buffering it, it just becomes a short hop aerial. So this doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as you don't accidentally do short hop aerials or have the aerial come out pretty late with the full hop, you're all good. For clarification, after pressing jump, you need to wait at least 3 frames before pressing attack. Wait too long, however, and you might screw up your combo. Something you should be practicing is full hopping forward with a forward air, and then tap yourself back, and then before you land, use the C-stick to land with any kind of aerial while you still are moving backwards. The next exercise is to simply practice jabbing in the opposite direction over and over again. You can start off by simply turning around in place over and over, by gently and barely moving the stick to the left and right. Then press jab as you've turned around and released the control stick. This is important to learn as you'll want to later understand how to apply this with the C stick for easy tilts behind you, or be able to jab out of shield behind you if ever needed. This can even be helpful for combos as well. In fact, to practice this, you can pick link, do a short hop, fast fall, and land with the first hit of back air, then reverse your jab. The next exercise is to practice dash dancing, so you don't move too much to the left and right when you didn't want to and get lost. Because these inputs can be buffered, it's important to understand how to preemptively buffer your movement so that you have full control. You should also practice running far, releasing the stick, and immediately tapping yourself to the other direction, so you don't get the turnaround animation. Then start combining both of these movement options to basically get really comfortable with how you can move and change directions at any time immediately. The next exercise is to now practice everything we went through all at once and try your best for as long as possible to never miss input to gain full control over your movement and spacing at the same time as being able to choose what buffered aerial you want to do at any time and fast fall at any time if needed. For the next exercise, we'll be going to the ledge. Obviously, we don't have to practice regular get up, get up attack, ledge roll, or ledge jump. But you should be practicing releasing the ledge and double jumping back into the stage as fast as possible. The white circle indicates where you press the jump button. The sooner you press jump after flicking down on the control stick, the more distance you'll get jumping back to stage. Now you just need to practice doing buffered aerials together with the double jump. The input might be easier if you have a shoulder button on jump as then you'll be able to press the shoulder button and C-stick together to get an automatic buffered up air. Instead now, when you're hanging on the ledge, you just flick down on the control stick first, then press jump and C-stick up. Next, you need to practice double jumping in, and instead of buffering the aerial, you need to delay it and land with it, which will do a better job at beating shields, while the buffered aerial is more for anti-airing or just straight up punishing the opponent. Learn how to do this while jumping all the way in and landing with a back air, as well as jumping in, 
tapping yourself back quickly and landing at the very edge of the stage with a spaced forward air to push them away from you and create distance. Once you now know how to do this, the final thing to practice at the ledge is to do both a buffered aerial into a secondary landing aerial, which of course only works for some characters. In this case, it's recommended to pick inkling, double jump in with neutral air, and then cross up with back air. The second aerial should be done with the C-Stick. The next exercise is all about practicing teching. This can be practiced in many ways, of course. You could, for example, pick any character and set them to charge a smash attack or a strong neutral special. And once you get launched, try teching every time. And start including teching to the left and right. Start also practicing air dodging down to get a tech, so you understand how close you have to be for it to work. The next step is to practice instant dash attacks from a standing position, which is done by tapping the control stick and C-stick together towards the right or left. Then try pulling this off during a dash dance. Next, you'll want to practice dash cancelling. Run forward and do jabs, tilts, smashes, and even practice reversing it by making sure you run just enough so that you get the turnaround animation and then do a jab, tilt, or a smash. Next up, you want to practice B-reversing. For this one, you could always slow down the time to just understand how to execute it first. Start by jumping forward, press neutral B, then immediately after, press yourself to the opposite direction. Then you can start doing it at faster speed till you get to normal speed and start trying to do this with other special moves. For more details on how to do this exactly with other special moves, then please watch The Art of Smash Ultimate Expert. Everything is explained there. Alright, so in the next exercise, you want to be practicing Reverse Aerial Rush, or RAR. This is basically where you run, turn, and quickly jump so that you jump backwards in the direction of your initial run while still keeping some of your momentum. It is simply done by pressing right, left, jump, and then right again pretty quickly. Do this back and forth as you run a long distance to get the hang of it. Then start adding a buffered aerial, Then start practicing landing with the aerial instead. And finally, add the fastball. Once you can do this from a run, try doing it from an initial dash. This time, the timing is much tighter, and you'll need to press things even faster for it to work. Do it back and forth until you are satisfied. Next up is Z-dropping. Just spawn any kind of item you can pick up, jump, press grab while the control stick is set to neutral position to drop the item and re-catch it with either A to neutral air or use the C-stick for any other aerial. Now start moving around while you do this to get comfortable with it. The next thing you want to practice is Perfect Shield, or Parry. Pick a character like Sheik and have her charge forward smash against you. Start learning how to time a Perfect Shield against both the kicks. Then you can also pick Falco and spawn two of them. Tell them to press Neutral B and then time Perfect Shields against both as well as you can. Now obviously if you have a character with the specific character tech, such as platform cancelling or float cancelling, you should be practicing those as well. But most importantly, you should be practicing combos. And you'll see that the majority of these combos that I show will combine a ton of tech together. Try to pull them off perfectly and try doing it multiple times in a row. Just keep in mind that the training mode combo counter is broken. So even if it says it was a combo, sometimes the opponent could still double jump out or air dodge. But it doesn't really matter for this exercise as you just want to get it anyway to make sure you pulled it off correctly. Of course, you could always try watching the videos I've done on Ultimate already and try mimicking combos from there, or even watch the Art of Smash 4 character videos to try pulling off certain combos from there too. Although keep in mind that some combos won't work in this game. Here are some combos that you can practice to gain a better understanding of the technical demand for this game. If you can't pull these off at all or don't really understand how to pull it off, then you're still not really ready yet, and you'll probably need to practice the previous steps some more. Or go back and watch the Art of Smash series to get clarification on how something works and why. And in terms of knowing how to apply this in a real game, you won't have to worry about it so much as long as you fundamentally understand why you would want to use a specific tech. As long as it's practiced and you're really comfortable with it, your fingers will be doing it for you when the opportunity starts presenting itself over time, and you'll get better at it with experience.
You could also contact me on Discord for a private session where I could teach you anything about the game and coach you to becoming the best player that you can be.